everything up. So the main important thing, ladies and gentlemen, when we're doing our um, arithmetic sequences is you know, use an explicit formula. So if we're asked to find a sub 1, d, and the explicit formula, the basic thing we can under, the basic thing I want you guys to understand is we can represent this formula. What I want you, the main important thing I want you guys to understand about this formula is I have a sub n, and then I have the n. These two n's correspond with each other. All right. I also have a sub 1, which represents the first term. This one and that one correspond to each other. So as you change them, they're going to change. As you change one, the other one is going to change. Okay? What I mean by that is, if we're going to find this, I, the only thing I don't know is d. I know what a sub 3 and a sub 7, and I know their values. So what I'll do is I'll say, I know what a sub 7 is, and I know what a sub 3 is. You guys see that? And then, instead of using n and 1, I'm now going to replace that with 7 and 3. Again, I don't know the difference, but what are we trying to figure out? What is the common difference, right? So I know what a sub 7 and a sub 3 are. a sub 7 is negative 8. a sub 3 is 32. Plus 7 minus 3 is 4 times d. Now I just solve for d. So I subtract 32. I get negative 40 equals 4d. Divide by 4, divide by 4, negative 10 equals d. Wait, okay, so how'd you get a second How'd you get negative 8 and 32? Remember, a sub 7 is equal to negative 8. Okay. a sub 3 is equal to 32. And just remember what I wrote like here, that these numbers correspond with each other, right? So now we got our first, now we got d which is very good. Now, to be able to determine a sub 1, though, again, we want to go back to our formula. But when we go back to our formula this time, well, now we know what a sub 1 is. And we know what d is. So we don't need to plug, we don't need to change a sub 1 in this 1, right? We already know that's what we're looking for. So we don't need to plug anything in for a sub 1 or change that. But we do need to plug in something in for a sub n. So do we have a number, uh, do we have a value in the sequence that we know? We know a sub 3 now, right? a sub 3 is 32. We also know a sub 7 equals negative 8. We can use any value that we want to. It doesn't matter. So you could do your example like this. a sub 3 equals 32 plus um, 3 minus 1 times d, which is negative 10. You could also do a sub 7 equals negative 8 plus 7 minus 1 times negative 10. Do you guys see how, do you guys see that there's the difference in these two? Um, a sub 1, oops, what am I doing? That was a sub 1. So you can use either one of these formulas. It doesn't really matter which one you use. Um, for simplicity purposes, I'm going to use this one. So I didn't, do I know what a sub 3 is? Yes, that's 32 equals a sub 1. 3 minus 2 is 2 times negative 10. 32 equals a sub 1 minus 20 plus 20 plus 20. 52 equals a sub 1. And now that I know what a sub 1 is, I can write the explicit formula where it says a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times negative 10. OK? And technically, ladies and gentlemen, since you should be knowing what, how to expect 